Hey, we're back. What's up, everybody? It's episode 162 of the Audible Farm podcast, and this episode is brought to you by Couchtown Coffee. Couchtown Coffee is roasted right here in Iowa, and it's my favorite coffee. Full disclosure, I'm out of Couchtown, and I'm drinking other coffee, and it's not good. So I've got to make an order for Couchtown, and I'm going to. I'm going to go to www.couchtowncoffee.com. I'm going to find a coffee I like. I'm going to tell them how I want it roasted. I'm going to make an order, and when I do, I'm also using my own code word. I'm going to save 20%, telling them that Audible Farm sent me there. Why do they do that? Because Couchtown Coffee is that awesome. You've got to check it out. So go to CouchtownCoffee.com, find a coffee you like, make an order, and when you do, let them know Audible Farm sent you, and they'll give you 20% off. Thanks, Couchtown. This episode, I'm sitting down with Don Fisher. I originally um, knew of Don as DJ Fisher. And that's just like I, what I figured his name was, was DJ. And then um, I like when I got in contact with him, I'm like, Don Fisher, I, I thought you went by DJ. And he says, yeah, I did. But we got into like that in the like right in the very beginning of the podcast. And it was kind of like an interesting, I didn't know that was going to be a discussion we were going to have. So it's kind of fun to, to hear why there was a name change, um, even though both of them are technically his name. So he's going by Don now or DJ. Uh, he's a fun guy. I, I didn't know him before the podcast. I'd only talked to him once ever at a jam night. And, uh, I'm not even sure I'd seen him live, um, since he even joined the day drinkers. So, um, I know that he's played around the Fort Dodge area quite a bit. I see him popping up at shows and a lot of times when he's playing at shows, I'm also playing a show, so I can't go unfortunately, but that's kind of just the way it works. But, uh, I ran into him at a jam night. He was at a jam night. He was playing some guitar. We traded some leads here and there. It was pretty fun. So, uh, I said, Hey, you got to get on the podcast and he agreed and whammo here it is. So, uh, this is episode 162 with Don Fisher. Let's see here. He plays with the Day Drinkers. He's a solo artist, and he's been with other bands, too. We get into all that in the podcast. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Episode 162 with Don Fisher. It's the Audible Farm Podcast. With your host, Peter Stockdale. All right, today I'm sitting down with DJ or Don Fisher. Um, take your pick. Take your pick. Uh, I think I originally knew you as DJ. Like, is that how like you went for a while, or was that yeah. like a thing with? I mean, I asked you earlier, and you said it was something to do with bookings. So, like, how did all, how did the like the weird name change come about? Because it's like I'm sure you go by both either way. Yeah. Well, my my mom named me Donald, um, and my dad did actually. His dad was Donald, and he was a farmer cool I mean, <laughs> and you know it was just a name that i don't know never seemed like it fit me uh i've been dj my whole life and just kind of went ahead and went with that for a long time and all of a sudden i'm starting to book things and people are like oh we thought there was like gonna be a dj here oh so i get that, you now that check out yeah so yeah so, <laughs> so it's just like also oh, dj fish is gonna have the headphones hanging off of one ear going wicked chicka wicked and, chicka chicka yeah, yeah. okay and I then get everybody's it. sad and disappointed or Maybe surprised and happy. I don't really that's, know. That's that's weird. I I would have never thought of that. Like yeah, I guess. I guess when you start doing like stuff around Ankeny area or oh, bigger, yeah. bigger, bigger places, college like... college markets makes sense now. <clears throat> yeah, because <laughs> you think to yourself like, I mean, I, I mean, you, I'm not in that market, and you're not either. I'm assuming so. It's kind of like not, DJ. I'm like not. what? But I would have never thought of that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, that so. makes sense. I mean, I've, I've heard people say that where, like, you go online and a lot of people have the solo artist name or it's like, um, so if it was me, it'd be like Peter Stockdale Music, right. you know? So, like, some people think, like, that almost sounds like you're going to show up with, like, a just a DJ set, like a laptop and some speakers and, like, play music for people. Like, you know, and it's like, I get where that kind of comes in, but, you know, it's kind of weird the whole titling yourself online because, like, how do you do it? Like, DJ right. slash Don Fisher... <laughs> solo musician plus band like how how long do you want to get the name or like that's it, yeah that's the thing and just being overly uh, like just painfully humble person like i don't even have my own music page yeah so that was something else i asked you like i looked it up online i'm like i found the day drinkers stuff online but i can't find anything for you do you have one and you're just like no not yet i probably should and it's, mm -hmm. it's 
probably time. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, you've been playing a lot of gigs. I've seen you around the area. Yeah, gotten pretty busy in the last uh, few months. So yeah, just it's, taking a little downtime right now. Actually, is that by design or is that like uh, a thing where it's just the music bookings have now just started coming in because people are noticing or right and. Um, you know, I'll go one place and play, and somebody goes, "Oh, I'll go check this place out," and I'll go put my put my name in there and get a call, and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Fort Dodge is just where it's at, though. Yeah, I mean that's like it that's the fun is. thing. Uh, I've been coming I've, here for like five years now, and it's just always the best place to play. Yeah, there's enough places and enough nights of music and enough people that enjoy it that it seems like it's just like the perfect medley of everything that needs to happen in a music scene and some of that like is the planning on the businesses part and some of that is like i know that like uh the four dodge fine arts association kind of like tried to coordinate some of that other stuff with within like different parts of the music scene to try to make sure they didn't overlap nights and compete with each other like on that sense and it it makes a lot of sense you know and it seems to have worked out really well and i don't know if other towns i'm sure other towns have it the same way i'm sure you can go to cedar rapids get a booking at a different place you know and just not even leave town if you didn't need to but like i don't know there's a lot of people that come in from outside of fort dodge and you're not like too far outside of fort dodge i mean iowa falls ish far enough that i just kind of feel like the adopted stepchild (laughs) that's funny because i mean like i'm north of fort dodge so it's like it doesn't feel like i'm from fort dodge either but i like spend enough time down there so i kind of know the musicians around the area right plus like humboldt doesn't have much you know music scene here i mean there is like a little bit but there's not like places to play and things going on all the time what is there there's a couple there's a couple bars right there's yeah the, the poor house which closed the poor house. they did close yep and then the prowler which closed the prowler yep i think i played at the prowler once that was yep it's an experience yeah i played at the prowler <laughs> once too and it's that's a, that was a fun one too and i don't i'm not gonna like cast poorly on it because but it's closed now and it was there's was definitely people there that were enjoying and wanted to see us play there and there were definitely people there that like didn't want anything to do with music being there So it was kind of like... That sounds about, yeah. It's But it's just like, some of that's just the clientele, small town bar. And it's like, well, if they only have music once a month, like you're just ruining somebody's Saturday at that point in time. You know, like, (laughs) you know, they're not known for having music there. And I mean, there's enough places in Fort Dodge that are known for that, you know. Um, Both of the breweries, uh, sneakers, you know, um, bootleggers has music. And I mean, those are just like the, I would say the big four maybe in town. There's probably more that I'm just like casting aside. Like the fireside has, has music sometimes. And uh, that's usually the place I stop in after I play. Yeah. You know, was it kind of nice? What's the man? I can't remember the one it's changed names so many times. Uh, four seasons, maybe I think is what it's called or what is it? Called? Oh, what are you Kings? Saying Kings? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it still four seasons? I, I don't know. I think it is but, four seasons now, right? Yeah, I think so. But yeah, I, I mean, there's been in there since it was Kings. I went to play uh, back when I was playing with Tank. Went to play at Kings, and we started off kind of playing our country stuff that we were doing at the time, and it just wasn't, you know, hitting. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> and he ended up doing like a whole R and B show solo. I was like, "You got this. You yep. go ahead and take care of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to kick back and." That's kind of how that went at Kings that night. Yeah, I mean that's that's a tough one too because sometimes that's that's one where like depending on the clientele, there's different people in there like on different nights or like different. Every Saturday is a different different ordeal. You know, sometimes they want to hear music and sometimes they don't. Like, um, and nothing against it, but I remember going there and running sound for a show once, and the beatbox or the the jukebox was still on like in the back part of the room, <laughs> and it's just I like was like, can you turn the jukebox off? And they're just like, oh, it's off, and I'm like. Okay, right. and like, yeah, I'm just, I, and I don't know, maybe they thought it was off. Like, I always just, like, give people the benefit of the doubt. It's like, eh, like, I tried. Like, we'll just, I mean, it doesn't matter that much, I'll I guess. Just, I'll just, yeah, okay. You know? <laughs> and it's not like it was wrecking anything, you know, no, but yeah. in the back, it was definitely, like, if you went to the back of the room, it was like, it sounds like there's two bands playing right now. It's like, oh, there's music and the speakers coming out, so. It's always, <clears throat> it's always weird when you get into a situation like that where you just got to kind of find one or two people that are enjoying what you're doing and just play to them. Yeah. And, yeah that's, and that's all you can really do yeah and it's almost fun though to like you play a song and you're like i feel like i crushed that and you look around like nobody liked it all right let's try something different you know and right. you're just like throwing stuff at the wall and see what sticks until you figure out the ones that people are just like all right this is what we were into and you're like all right i'll play stuff in Let me that look at this playlist again let's try that yeah i was gonna play at the end let's do it now yep yep <laughs> yeah. just see if you can get people with one or two like right you know and that's like i just think that's enjoyable about watching singer songwriters 
like go out and do that stuff because it's like you can you have the ability to like everyone learns different songs and i mean i'm no different but like you guys are out there singing them and stuff so like you have to like sit there and be like oh you didn't like this country tune like let's see what you think about like jack and diane maybe you know so you like throw something else out there and it's like maybe Something's maybe it's like gonna connect at some point jimmy hendrix like what are we looking for here you know so you just start like chucking different stuff in there from different genres and eras and stuff so yeah, you were talking about playing with Tank. Um, I know that you play with the Day Drinkers, and that's kind of how I, I figured out you know who you were because I haven't been in the music scene in the Fort Dodge area for like terribly long, um, maybe like five years tops. But like, uh, I remember like seeing that you would be playing solo shows. And I'm like, oh, this guy's playing with the Day Drinkers now. That's cool. And then I found out that you played with Tank beforehand. So like, let's go back all the way to the beginning. Let's find out like how it all started. Were you like growing up around music? Was there always a guitar there? Or was it something that like as a teenager, you were like, I'm going to try and pick this up or. Yeah, I think it started um, guitar wise when I was a teenager. Uh, my grandma was always musically gifted and she That's was cool. an organ, organ player for the church for ever and ever and ever and ever. Just super awesome. She played in a, or she sang in a trio with her sisters and awesome, fantastic lady. And, uh. I guess I didn't really do a whole lot musically until probably, I was probably 14. Mm -hmm. And my friend had this old Gretsch guitar, and he was like an upperclassman, and we were like just these, we were the young, cool freshmen that got to hang out with the upperclassmen. And he had this Gretsch, just old, awesome guitar, and like I just picked it up, and I was like, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I went out and, uh, my mom bought me my first guitar and it was from, a from a furniture store in Marshalltown. Hmm. They sold a Johnson acoustics, which are not terrible. And I, (laughs) it was all black, like Johnny Cash. And, uh, I don't know. I got a chord book and just taught myself pretty much every chord I could possibly teach myself and just kind of kept working off that. And, um. You know, I it was just something I did yeah. for a long time. I didn't do it really professionally until, well, I suppose, until Tank Anthony Band, until we started that up. Did you uh, play, like, anything in school at all? Like, you know, no band. No nope. band at all. Sang in choir. That's pretty wild. Well, I mean, that explains <laughs> the good singing, though, then. So. Well, like, that's debatable. <laughs> well, I mean, it's definitely subjective, I, I would yeah. say. So, like, sure. I don't know. I can sing-ish, but I... No, I can't sing as good as a lot of people. So that's where I, I'm always just blown away by how people can sing. Yeah. Cause like you think your voice, like everyone uses their voice every day. So everyone should be able to sing kind of like if you had a guitar in your hands and you were just blah, blah, blah all day long on the guitar. You, yeah, you should be able to play guitar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't work like that even <laughs> remotely at all. No. I mean, the excuse no. for that would be like, you're not singing everything all day. It's like well, okay, a lot I of guess. people tell me they, they like what I'm doing. They like my voice. And I just, you know, I'm the type of person that just, if I don't have to listen to myself, like I'm probably not going to listen to this back. Yeah. <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> i hate my voicemail i hate yeah everything oh so, yeah you know. i could yeah i can see that for yeah. sure i mean I, it's something i eventually got over like doing the podcast because i mean even just sitting with the headphones on like it's weird sometimes we're like that's what i sound like you know and I, <laughs> is, I, that, is that what i really sound like yeah i mean do you ever have do you ever feel that way when you play guitar though where you're just like i feel like i'm shredding up here and then you go listen to it back and you're like that's still killer, but I feel like I, in the moment I thought I was just like just wailing, you know, yeah, or something there, like. There's days and uh, or times uh, I f- I feel like I'm feeling better about it mm-hmm. more and more every time I play. But yeah, it's it's definitely a weird one because like I don't know, like when I play guitar, it's not like I'd think that that's not what's coming out of it, but like when I listen back to it, it's like. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of a weird thing. It's almost like that's what it sounds like, but I also know that's what it sounds like because I'm there playing it in the moment, you know, but <laughs> yeah. to hear it yeah. full band recorded back later, it's kind of, kind of weird. Cause then you start to figure out like, I'd change this and then you just start to adapt or whatever, but right. yeah. try to not do that again or do something different there next time. Um, I also try and take into account that anything I'm listening to is recorded on a cell phone. So, <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. That's very true as well. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, and they're getting pretty good nowadays. I mean, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I think my iPhone's great. Yeah, I mean, even just like your basic iPhones these days are are mind blowingly good as far as pictures and video quality and things like that. So, yeah, I, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm sure everyone that just doesn't have an iPhone is just like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get with yeah. it, people. No, I'm well, just kidding. Your Galaxy doesn't record me as good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I sound better on an Apple. <laughs> 
<laughs> That'd be like the weirdest thing to just start talking about at a show, like in the middle, just like I see you recording me with a you know Note Seven. I don't want put it down. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my gosh! Everybody, put all your galaxies in this basket before I start. <laughs> iPhones are okay though. They have a lighting aperture that is is mwah, it's yeah. magnificent. You know, <laughs> like, like, I don't know. It blurs the background. It's amazing. <laughs> Oh, it's so classic. Oh, man. So did you like uh, after high school, like let's just say you're like you're playing all through high school and stuff like that. And then was it just like Tank Anthony band then? Or did you ever try to do like a solo show or were you like playing uh, yeah. acoustic around a campfire singing for people? Or I did a little bit of solo stuff just um, at a small bar. I used to do uh, auto body restoration, like classic car restoration. Cool. And this was a tiny town in Witten and there was a bar across the street called Greasy's. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was greasy, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but we would, I would go in there and, you know, they're like, well, why don't you come play, you know, come play a little bit. We'll give you, we'll throw you a hundred bucks or whatever, you know, and I'd go in there and play a two, three hour set once a month or so. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where it started. And then I took quite a bit of time off after greasy shut down actually. And then didn't really do it much for a long time. Just kind of played guitar for myself just to enjoy it. And then met Mr. Tank Anthony at the bar in Iowa Falls at the 503. Mm-hmm. And he was looking for somebody to come play guitar. And uh, I ended up going over and playing for a bit. And we decided to maybe do something with it. And then we we did it as a duo for well, probably a year and a half, two years. And then brought in um, Alex. Mm-hmm. And uh, we found Fernando after going through like a couple drummers Mm -hmm. (laughs) and yeah, it was, it was some of the funnest times I've ever had in my whole life going to like Nashville with them and doing all kinds of fun things. That would be awesome. Oh yeah. It was a wild time. Mm -hmm. I think we watched, I literally watched like two or three people die during our shows. Like I don't understand how (laughs) somebody (laughs) actually died. (laughs) That's wild. Yeah. 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 You want to extrapolate on that at all or no? Is that Um, that was mystery? (laughs) Yeah, we'll just leave that a mystery. All right, you got to go to one of his shows and ask him about that. That's yeah. I, uh, yeah, go 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 ask him about the time somebody died. Oh my gosh, yeah, I, I do remember like hearing some of the stories about going to Nashville and just like how there's so many people there. It like is, it's just it is. doesn't matter like almost what time of the day. It's just yeah, it was it was just fun to just kind of be there as a group and just have a good time. Um, would I go back to Nashville? I don't know. Probably <laughs> probably not. Uh, not really, not really I've n- and I've never been and I've been a lot of a lot of places I want to say like a you know everywhere but I've been to a lot of like different places but for some reason I've never been to Nashville it would be sweet to just to go check it out just to see it you it know? is there's a lot of history there and there's a lot of cool like high-end guitar shops to check out Ooh, just yeah. go geek out on yeah I will awesome I will be there without my wallet <laughs> yeah, that's probably smart yeah but even then I'd probably open my wallet be like this many and they'd be like uh-uh I oh, drove I okay. we drove down there I loaded everything up and went to a music store and unloaded so much gear and bought a strat and a blues junior and that's kind of where the tube amp thing started for me where i really started liking tube amps oh yeah i mean that's that's a that's a gear talk subject we're not far enough in to, to yeah, detract right. we'll to my listeners up. but like oh man i love me some <laughs> tube amps i mean um yeah anyway so we'll just we'll sidetrack that for for a little bit so yeah that could be a tangent yeah um so you're playing with tank anthony band and then how did you join up with the day drinkers then eventually uh well i just kind of COVID hit with uh all of its bullshit i guess yep. and uh, uh we had to kind of do smaller shows he was doing a lot of solo stuff i wasn't really getting super involved in it anymore and i just kind of decided to take a step back from it for a while and you know everybody's cool everybody's good Mm -hmm. love all those guys um but started doing some solo stuff um and then i I hit up jordan one day because i've known jordan since coming and playing for about five years Mm -hmm. and uh i said hey we should get together you know just play some time have a good time he said, yeah. He goes, well, you're looking for a band? I said, yeah. He goes, you want to be a day drinker? It's <laughs> like, oh, maybe kind of, sort of. you know. Yeah. And, and we got to play it. Uh, I think it was, is it Bootleggers? I think it yep. was Bootleggers. Sounds right. Yep. Yeah. I just kind of came in and jumped in on their set. And yeah, away we went. 
That's awesome, man. I mean, I feel like that's kind of how it works out too. Is like you, you know, somebody, maybe you've played with them a couple times or you've seen them at a show here or there and you just kind of like, I know the same songs you kind of know for the most part. Let's just sit in and see how it goes. And it's like, that was good. Let's just iron out the rough spots and go with it. You know, right. like I yeah. feel some of that just comes down <clears throat> to like being prepared. And some of it comes down to dumb luck or just like knowing the same songs or whatever. But yeah, for sure. And, um, I don't know. It's great. It was great to play with uh, somebody that had some originals too. I really enjoyed playing Jordan songs. Yeah. So He's in the day drinkers, do you guys like share the singing or? Uh, uh, it depends on the venue and the situation. Sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes I'll come back in on the last set and do a couple. Uh, but we predominantly, I like to kind of let Jordan take the wheel on the singing. Oh, nice. And I just kind of get to do a lead thing, which is great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that either. So, yeah. like, you play acoustic and you also play leads. So, what came first, the acoustic or the electric? The acoustic came first. I guess that's what I taught myself chords and stuff on um, when I was 14. And then, of course, you know, you have to get an electric. Yeah. And it was just this cheap Strat. Strat was my first guitar. Yep. And that was fun. That was cool. Then I had a... Did you get, like, the little kit where it's like, here's the amp and the guitar, <laughs> and it comes with a strap and three picks? You know, I, I did not get the kit. I bought it at a pawn shop. Oh, just nice. Real cheap. Yep. And Marshalltown had a... They have, like, the biggest gun store of a pawn shop in Iowa or some shit. And hmm. then they had a they had a guitar deal upstairs, and that's where I got that. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, I don't know if they're... I'm sure they're still open. Yeah. But... Let's go in there, maybe. Check that out. Yeah, so that was my first electric, and I just kind of changed it up from there. I had a Les Paul for a minute, and uh, then I didn't have any electrics for a while, and all I had was acoustics, and then... What made you sell off all the electrics and go just acoustic? I guess I wasn't using it. I wasn't yeah. needing it. Yeah, and then I got back into the electrics when I started doing some solo stuff in my early 20s. And then, um, yeah, it's just been kind of swapping and changing gear for the longest time. <laughs> it's yeah. just kind of nonstop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like the benefit and downfall of like kind of enjoying gear is like you're just like, I wonder what this sounds like. And then you buy one and you're like, nah, I don't like it, I'll sell it. Yep. And you're like, you know, <laughs> or like you might be like, I like this better than what I have. I'm going to sell that, you know, and then like, you know, you yeah. might find yourself years down the road be like, I want to buy one of those again. Like, can you go try and find, like, one of these old things that you had at one right. point in time? I, I have returned to strats, like, pretty much predominantly. Um, I had Telecasters for a while, and then I had a, a GNL ASAT that had the the strat pickups in it. And I was mm -hmm. like, I should probably go back to a strat. So, yep, pretty much strats. Um, it's where I feel at home. Yeah, I mean, for people that don't know, like, guitar shapes and names, like, that's, like, your Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, you know, style guitar. Right. I'm trying to think of who else famous plays strats. There's a bazillion people, but... SRV, yeah. Yeah, yeah Stevie Ray Vaughan, that's a... But, yeah, you get the gist. So, like, <laughs> that's a crazy one, because I, like... That was my first guitar. It was just, like, a Squire Strat. I bought, like, one of those, you know... I think at the time it was, like, 250-ish bucks, and it was just, like your guitar, your amp, your cable, and, you know, a gig bag, and it came with, like, you know, like I said, it was just, like, here's three picks for it, and it was just, like, every, they had everything for you in it, so I was, like, all right, let's do this, and I eventually went to a Les Paul, and I just, like, never looked back, and yeah. I, it's so weird how people gravitate towards certain instruments. I actually picked up a Les Paul a couple months ago, and I'm getting along with it, but... It is. It's trying to get back to something totally different. It's, yeah. I just, I'm super into kind of that Allman Brothers sound, uh, Tedeschi Trucks band. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really liking that sound, so I'm trying to get along with this Les Paul. And it's, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. I feel like one of the things that uh, always makes me think about it is like you get used to using one guitar or one amp and you just like, well, the settings have to be somewhere in this neighborhood to sound like what I want it to sound like. You can tweak it a little bit here and there or whatever, but then you're just like, well, I'm going now you take the strat out and you plug a Les Paul and you're like, I need to twist a bunch of these knobs and it's <laughs> yeah, in order to get it to true. kind of sound where I want it to sound, which is kind of weird to me. Cause I feel like, I mean, you should just be able to plug and play, but at the same time, like it also makes tons of sense. And I mean, even with like little amps, like you put a Les Paul into like a little tube amp and it's like, this needs to get some serious dialing differently than yeah. it would for. On one hand. And then on the other hand, you know, you go and watch um, 
Brutal Republic play and you watch Jeremy do SRV on a, on a Les Paul yep. and it's like, maybe I just need to just practice more. Yeah. That's also <laughs> very much that it's like, he's playing SRV on a Les Paul through like an Eddie Van Halen amp, you know? And it's just like, a <laughs> and stack. it sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah Somehow yeah. he's doing this. So yeah. Yep. yeah. And some of the, I mean, obviously like this, this comes down to me just being like hyper gear, you know, whatever person, but like, it's just like, you gotta dial it in just the right way. And some people, like you said, it's just like, I just turn the volume knob to here and switch the pickup to this and then whammo. It's, there it is. It sounds like what I want it to. So a lot of it's in the fingers. A lot of it is in the fingers. There's videos of people doing that. Like Joe Satriani playing surfing with the alien on like a pig nose guitar through like some junky little, like, practice amp and like stuff and it sounds like amazing it's like okay like this doesn't make yeah, any sense fair enough yeah There's, like not even a whammy bar on it it still sounds like okay all right you know and that's like one of those things i think is cool also about playing around here like you mentioned jeremy ober there's so many people around here where it's just like i like the way this person does that and you go up to a different person and you're like i like the way this person does that so there's always something you feel like you could learn from different people oh yeah you take something from a lot of people around here it's, yeah yeah like i said fort dodge's pretty much where it's at yeah for me anyway i i get a call once in a while to play with um with jeremy or with uh clint and it's nice to do different things with different people all the yeah. time like that jam night in barnum i hadn't been to that in probably two years mm -hmm. i went to that was that just last week two yeah, weeks I think ago so. I, think so. I don't Something remember like that. yeah that's my how, days are run together <laughs> that's how it happens man yeah but yeah that's just such a blast and you get, just get so many great musicians different mu kinds of musicians yeah come through there and every single week is different too which is the crazy thing about there because some weeks you'll feel like it's like oh this is a slow week and then you start to figure out like it's just later in the night different people come in and you get like a different lineup and you're like oh this is getting nuts now you know or whatever you know yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. it all just depends like one person can make or break the night and then sometimes it's just like we're like i'm, I'm only gonna get to play a couple songs tonight and everyone else is gonna get to play and it's like but that's also cool because it's like yeah you know now i don't have to do anything i get to watch people and i mean that's honestly what got me into music in the first place was like just watching other people play it you know it's true yep um like it's kind of odd that you had this story of like upperclassmen playing guitar because we had that in our high school as well and like when I, we were freshmen we we're like we're buying guitars and doing this you know like that was kind of one of the driving factors even though some of us had kind of been dinking around a little earlier but that's when we all bought our electric guitars and tried to make a band but you know, it's kind of crazy who inspires you and, and how they do inspire you. Is there, like, anybody or else around that's, like, not from the Four Dodge area and stuff that you remember, like, playing guitar that you're just like, oh, I got to I gotta hang out with this person or try doing what they're doing or whatever? Oh, for sure. Um, there's a guy that, well, I graduated from Eldora, and he lived in a town south of there, a tiny town called Gifford. And his name's Drew Campbell, and he's set up all my guitars since I've been playing guitar. And he's just... A phenomenal player <clears throat> a great person he's he taught me a few things here and there and yeah he was probably one of my first influences i would say that's cool mm -hmm. yeah and he's just like this awesome story he uh like he contracted Lyme's disease like late in life mm -hmm. and he was misdiagnosed for a while that uh believe it or not go look it up that happens a lot with Lyme's disease and he yeah so he was in some really rough shape but like he's doing super great and like he's got his like old band from years ago back together like they were pretty like they opened for sticks and stuff like oh, they cool. were pretty awesome for a long time and What's so he's back to playing with them do you remember the band name um it was the residues and now it's just rez r-e-z Cool. I'll have to check them out. That mm -hmm. sounds sweet. Yeah, they're kind of just kind of a jam blues band, which is super like up my alley. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's yeah. why I like going to jam nights because it's just like, well, let's play a song. This is pretty much just a shell for everyone to play whatever they want to around it. You know. Yeah. For like, the, you getting know. to play. Um. Um. Oh, who's your guy you play with? Uh, Jesse. Jesse's. You yep. can't play Jesse's originals. Was kind of cool the other night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, gosh, and that's another one. He's he's writing enough originals now where it's like, oh crap. You know, he's got. 10 or so at least now so it's kind of fun we can go to a show and like fill it up with originals if you that's, want to it's kind of awesome yeah. it's kind of mind-blowing that's the know? dream i i still have songs that i'm sitting on that i rewrite rework throw away come back to and i just they're not ready to be out in the world yet i'm so picky and i'm my own biggest critic and i'm pretty hard on myself about that kind of stuff so yeah I at mean, one point at some day 
I mean, that's a tough one too. And I think some of that might come with like, I've seen some people write songs like behind the scenes and you get to see them like come to fruition. So they're like, this is how the song goes. And then you're just sitting there like, what if we tried something like this or something like this? And you give them like three or four ideas and they might take like part of one of those ideas because they liked a little part of it and they'll put that in there. And before you know it, like that's what helps them build the song to something different, you know? Right. And it's not like you're the catalyst, but sometimes getting some outside influence in on it is, right. is nice. Yeah. I'm hoping when the day drinkers kind of jump back in in the spring, we sit down and maybe write some stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, that would be sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm mean, having someone else to bounce ideas off of is always easier. You know, <laughs> I mean, it should be obvious. It's like business world, whatever, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, brainstorm, but, yeah. but still. Two um, heads is better than one. Right. Yeah. And it's also <laughs> nice to have someone around that's not going to critique you to the point where it's like downtrodden, you know? Um, but also to have somebody there that's like, you can bounce ideas off of, you know, uh, or like learn from, where like that's kind of how I started learning the guitar the best was when I had somebody next to me where I was, uh, me and I had a buddy that played a lot of guitar with me and he would, he'd come over he'd like learn stuff at night or whatever and we'd come over and we'd get together like a couple times a week and just play guitar and it's just like how'd you do that thing where'd you learn it like what's what's the thought process behind it like where does this fit in the best et cetera et cetera and we'd start to like dig around with that you know and just. Yeah. lay down like with a looper and stuff like you do sure. you know and you're just like well here's the chord progression let's see where it fits the best oh, you know? i think i think shoot a looper like made leaps and bounds for my plane when i started using it like just night and day difference yeah like, like pretty quick okay yeah so <laughs> like now i want to ask you when you're talking about that are you talking like as a practice aspect or a live aspect uh yeah both yes yeah. um practice for sure like the yeah, first time most... i got a looper it was I couldn't believe what was, I was like, I can do all this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It's like, what was the craziest thing? Like what got you into thinking like, I want to try and loop, I want to try a looper and see what happens. Um, well, I think I, I had just come out of the, uh, take Anthony band and I still wanted to do shows that had a band kind of a sound. Like I didn't want to just do an acoustic set mm -hmm. per se. I wanted to have something a little different, a little bigger sound. So I was like, well, if I use this looper, you know, I can, I play pretty percussively anyway on acoustic, so I can get kind of a drum sound and then I can lay it down and then I can really get kind of a bass drum sound on the guitar and I can just loop all these layers in and then I have, you know, I mean, if I'm playing a four chord song, four mm -hmm. or five chord song, that's the same throughout, that's when it works the best. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, then I can pretty much do whatever I want with it after that. Then it's run, it's playing. I can set the acoustic down. I can pick the electric up. I can play the leads, I can fill things in, I can sing on top of it, I can turn the volume knob down at the end and be done. And it's, yep. Yeah, it's pretty slick. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> Oh, yeah, because I, I guess I never even thought of that. You could do, like, the auto fade out with it. I, yeah. I do that with pretty much all of it, because you have to double-click that damn thing to stop it. And yep. it's, yeah. <laughs> yep. I oh. should invest in a better looper. Well, I mean, the, the, I'm assuming you're... Well, most of the single mini loopers are the same now, but they're all based off what was the ditto looper, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm around. Yeah. And so for people who are just like, what are you talking about loopers, you know? So, like, the gist of this, the word looper that this is used in would be, like, your guitar goes into this thing, and whatever you play into it, it has the ability to, like, record it and play it back over and over and over again. Right, on a loop. So, yep, on a loop. So, <laughs> hence the looper, you know? Because there's some people that think, like, oh, it's a loop station. It's like, well, that's a different thing. And it's like, yeah, it is. But, like, this is what a looper pedal is. So, like, that's what that does. And, I mean, like, the first time I ever got one, it was just, like, when I sat at my house alone, it was just like, well, now I get to figure out like what chords fit together to make like backing tracks and things like that too, as well, you know? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stuff, it was just like, well, I can do this and I can solo over it like this. And you start to like change the way you start to think about music just by like using this pedal and trying to see like what you can do with sure. it. Sure. And like learning major and minor keys off of it and what sounds better. Mm hmm over the certain chords and, yep yeah 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 it gets, it gets crazy uh the theory of it all i'm no theorist by any means i i remember vino trying to teach me some theory and yeah <laughs> it's it's like math for me i hate math i f i feel <laughs> like that's like a weird one so you get people that are like a, a genius scientist like a chemist it like wouldn't make sense to have them come back and teach like high school chemistry because they'd be too smart for it right and that's where people that like with music <laughs> theory they get too far into it and then they try to explain it back to people and it's like this doesn't work very well sure. and music theory is like a weird thing because it's like trying to explain the science behind like uh, a non-verbal spoken language you know like that is music 
Right. Like you're probably already doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you're probably already doing that. You just don't know why you're doing it. Yeah. And that's actually like what kind of explained music to me in the first place. Cause did you first start off like just memorizing everything where it's just like, it's these chords and this is what I have to do. Or like, this Basically. is the solo part. It has to be on these frets. Cause like, that's where I was like, my brain just went to like tab mode almost where yeah. it's like, and I always was bad at reading tabs. I wasn't ever a good tab reader. It was just cause it, I was, I think so rhythmically like yeah and there's no rhythm there's no play. rhythm to the numbers and yeah. like there's no you can't tell when the breaks are so you're just yeah I couldn't ever do tabs I just kind of that's the big downfall found to it when it sounded good and yeah if it sounds good it's almost right yeah it's passable <laughs> yeah I think I think that's like where music theory comes into play though when you start playing enough of certain things and then you're like oh this is just like this explains the pattern that i've been seeing over and over and over again yeah you know? like yeah you know like you just think like you're common like one four five progression it's just like oh that's common because these are the chords that fit the best together in this fashion and like it could like lead to like whatever's being sung over top of it can make it major or minor blah blah sure. this that and the other because the fourth and the fifth is the same and derpity derp so like <laughs> i mean there's all these different things you can explain about all that stuff where you start to think too much about it right but and then you're thinking and you're not just doing at that point yeah that's very true but then it's like hard to argue that when you see people like vino playing oh you know? sure absolutely no and that's but the a argument lot of fun against, to watch <laughs> argument against that might be owen the like the young bassist that plays he was at jam night uh, uh, yeah and, and it's not that he does not know music theory but he plays by ear oh and he's awesome too yeah it's yeah. like wild it's just yeah. like you're what? Like, but he also <laughs> practices a lot. So let's practice. Sure. You can't yep. make up for practice. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I'm I'm a huge uh, David Gilmore fan, and he just you know, pentatonic, yep. pentatonic scale man. Yeah. I mean, learn how to play it in different positions, and it's all the notes you really need right there. Just yeah. Find different spots on the neck to do it, and make it interesting. Is yeah, exactly. The name of the game, really. So. Yeah, I mean. Gosh, and that's another thing, like, I start to find out where, like, there's so many people that rip on the pentatonic, and I get it that you can, like, adventure outside of it a little bit here and there, and it makes, it spices it up enough where people, it can disguise it or whatever, but still, sure. like, you got to look back at David Gilmore, it's, like, mostly, like, you know, I would say, like, 95%, like, pentatonic yeah. noodling, you know? And it was so, but it's just, yeah, the emotion in it is mm -hmm. probably what does it. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's all in how you apply it, you know? That's no different than like we're all speaking the same words, but some people just apply them differently, and it comes out like more, more eloquent or like whatever you know. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. Oh man, I mean, not to just like bust analogies out. That's like my big thing, I guess, is analogies. But uh, yeah, the looper pedal. There's some people that like it and don't like it. Like I know playing with Jesse Wilson, as I do. Um, if we're playing just a duo show, he'll bring a looper with, and we hook uh, the vocals through it. Oh, neat. And then we do beatboxing over it, you know. Oh, okay. So like that's how we would like do like drum stuff. Yeah. And sure. um, I mean, he uses we use two. Okay, I'm gonna give away the secret. Nobody cares, but like we use two microphones, so we use two different channels, and then we can like mix the the beatbox a certain way to make it more percussive sounding when it comes out the speakers, you know, and not as Nice. Run uh, it off kind of a separate channel off yeah. here. Yep. Yeah, it's not just so blatantly beatboxed. But it's <laughs> it's really cool because it works out really well and stuff. And, like, there's people that are just like, eh, beatbox, dirt, dirt, dirt. It's like, what? Like, I, I, I just, I'm blown away that people don't like the looper. And I think some of it is it, it almost traps you into, like, some sort of conformity that, like, you can't get out of. Because, like, you can't stop the looper. It keeps going and, like, you can't get behind it. And, like, right. it, it doesn't show emotion. It doesn't breathe. You know, and that's like I get where some people say that about music. I get it, like 100. Yeah. percent But also, like you can't you can't feel confined in it. That is for sure. I would agree with that statement. There's a, you can't be playing with a live band that all of a sudden, if you want to bring the dynamic down, mm -hmm. you can do that on a looper. I mean, you may be able to turn the volume down, but you're not going to slow your tempo. Yeah, yep. I get it. I absolutely get it. But when you're playing by yourself, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh uh, yeah, totally. I mean. <sighs> I, and that's the thing is I honestly don't mind that about a looper. Like I get that it's definitely confining to an extent, but, and this is like the big, but I kind of enjoy that too. Cause you're like limited and it's like, how much can you do? Can you do with what you're limited to? You sure. know? Sure. Um, I, like I've played with bands where 
I've been limited to what I was allowed to play. And that's also fun to an extent because it's just like, now I'm confined to only exactly this and I have to just nail it, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's different aspects. I think about that stuff or like playing to click tracks. I've like been in bands that played to click tracks with backing tracks and things like that before. So I've had like a little taste of everything and I, I see where like some of it for some, some people could be like a turnoff, but I also like kind of enjoyed the challenge that each one presents. Sure. Because uh, it's not always, nothing's always as easy as it seems. Like when I started playing with Jesse, I was like, now I got to play licks that are less bluesy and more country. Sure. And that's where I never conform. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably a lot of my thing. Um, I always just wanted to make, the song my own in whatever direction I wanted to take it. And mm-hmm. when you, when a band wants to be a little more true to the nature of the song as it was written, mm-hmm. that's where I kind of slide out. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I, I get the whole like not wanting to play note for note. And that was actually something um, when I was giving Owen a ride home after the gig last night, I, we were talking about that. It's like, it's kind of nice to play with Jesse. Cause like he doesn't really harp at us. If we like, you have to play the exact solo or the exact this, that, and the other. Right. But it also gives the song like a life of its own. Like uh, we play Hurricane by Band of Heathens. And that's like. Me too. I love playing that song. Yeah. And it's kind of like a twangy country song, like in its originalness. But like I've I've almost never heard anybody play it like that live because everyone puts their own spin on it, you know? Sure. Like I I, I remember learning it actually for Tank Anthony Band. And then not after learning it, like not listening to it for probably two years Mm -hmm. and I'd been playing it on my own in my own way that I like to do it. And then I think I just listened to it the other day and I was like, wow, I do it. Nothing like that. No, that's crazy. (laughs) Just the cadence of how I deliver the words is different even. So, but it's, yeah. I think that's also fun about singers, songwriters is like sometimes their cadence is different. And some people are like, I don't like that, but I think that's mind blowing. Cause you know, what's right. You don't you, have to, <laughs> you know, what's coming, but it's almost like the vocals are now breathing with the music sure. instead. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I don't know, like there's a guy named Michael Husky. He was on the podcast not too long ago. And that's like one of his favorite things to do with songs. And, um, like, I think he titled it once, like, being kind of like a crooner, like the crooners would always like do that when they would sing, they'd like sure. sing slow and fast into the song. Like, you know, the vocals were coming, but you didn't know where. And sometimes they would stop and halt. And oh, what is that? Um, 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 there's a band that does like new music in like the old, you talking Richard cheese. It's clo- It's almost Richard cheese, but it's, um, Oh my gosh, that's going to bother me. Um, anyway, awesome. They get like, a female vocalist and they dress her up in like the old garb. Oh and yeah. It's freaking awesome. And then they have horns behind her and they just that like, they'll do, I think, uh, creep was one song that they did that it was just like, Oh man, this is awesome. And like this old, like vaudeville, 30s vaudeville yeah. version. Yeah. yeah that's so cool. cool. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, uh, I'll come up with the name about the time we're done with this. So, but we're like, once again, touching on the topic of the fact that like they're doing something, but in a different fashion and putting their own spin on it. And that's what makes it entertaining, you know? Yeah. And I mean, is it cool to see somebody go like we, there's an ACDC cover band that's played in Humboldt a couple times at the rock and picnic and they play like pretty much everything note for note, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, awesome that's cool and stuff you know it's coming and you're waiting for it and like note for note there yeah but it's also just as cool to go somewhere and be like oh i've never heard this done like this before yeah this is really interesting though yeah yeah yeah. or like used to hearing something a certain way for so long and then it's different it's yeah so here's another one for you like have you ever um like been listening to somebody play something and then you don't know what's coming until you hear the lyrics come in and you're like, this is this song. Like that's like (laughs) some of my favorite stuff ever. (laughs) Where it's just like, yeah, way out there, way totally different. And then it all kind of comes together when the lyrics hit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's some crazy stuff. (laughs) Like I'm starting to find that even like with playing with Jesse, like there's songs that I've never heard before that he's like, we're playing this song and, and we're like on stage. I'm like, okay, we'll see what comes out because I don't know how this song goes. And like you said, you go back and listen to it and like, this is completely different. Have you ever done that to a song like playing with another group, like maybe with Tank or with like Day Drinkers? And then you go back and listen to it and you're like, oh, I'm making, I'm changing this song a lot. And it doesn't sound bad, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Probably pretty much all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Like I said, I kind of just play it how I like to play it. And it's usually just that stratty, kind of gritty almost i don't want to say srv because i can't touch that but yeah 
But that tone, that quality of, Mm -hmm. yeah, playing lead, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like, that was the thing I noticed at Jam Night was you play a lot of, like, bluesy kind of stuff, which is kind of what I lean more towards, because that's what I started out learning, you know, and that's some of my favorite. The Albert King kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what a lot of people call me out. They're like, you listen to a lot of the Kings because you bend a lot of notes, and it's like, yeah, I mean, Mm -hmm. that's kind of what, (laughs) I mean, you start to emulate the people around and whatever, and that's just kind of crazy how that works out, but. Yeah, it's just, like you said, it's taking things from different people and playing different listening to other people play and you kind of take different things away from mm-hmm. other people and all of a sudden you have a sound of your own and that's that's been kind of the thing is just kind of finding my own kind of tone my own kind of sound when I play guitar that's been like the last four years work yeah I yeah. mean like that's that's another one too is like I for a while, I was just like, I got to get all these different pedals and try them out and blah, blah, blah. And then eventually, I was just like, I found ones that worked and they work and I just stuck with them and then just quit, yep. you know. And I hate to say that, but like even then, I've like tried intermingling some different pedals here and there. Like for a while, I was on a fuzz pedal kick. Sure. Got to find one. It sounds good. <laughs> Hendrix uses one sometimes. Right. It's got to be work. It's got to work for me. Yeah. Fuzz doesn't work for me. Doesn't work for doesn't me either. Doesn't work for me. Okay. I don't know why. I, and they're always like, well... It's because you don't really want, you want to turn it down. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. And even then though, like I'll turn it down and it's just like, okay, so I'm going to get some like backlash. And I, I don't know, like bless his heart. I'm going to call him out cause he's a nice guy. Matt Woods loaned me a fuzz pedal or two, uh, over the last year. And I tried him out and returned them. And, um, cause I had asked him, I was like, you use fuzz pedals. Like which ones do you use? I'll go try them and find them or whatever. And I saw him at a gig and he's just like, here's a couple, try them. Mm-hmm. So I tried them. And bless his heart, I just couldn't, like, there was one that I kind of got into, and it was a Keeley fuzz, and I'm, like, a big Keeley fan, because I just, that's the sound that I yeah, enjoy. Yeah, that's, that's the one, they say, right? You know? Yeah. And, but otherwise, it was just kind of like, yeah, it just obliterates the tone. Yeah. And I feel like it doesn't add to it, you know? I, I guess I would agree with you, and I'm, like you said, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are, like, super mad right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, but yeah, you just got to find what works for you, like... I'm running a compressor. I'm running a TS9. Yep. Should be uh, should be standard issued. That's pretty standard. Yeah. Yep. TS9 yep. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a wah that I use once in a while. Um, and then I do have a, it's kind of a tape echo thing. It's based off David Gilmore's Echo Rec mm-hmm. that just you can adjust the age it used to, it was this disc that he had that would circle around and it would kind of go like this because the disc was warped and you'd get a different tone mm-hmm. off of this thing and it was a tape echo and i have a pedal that kind of emulates that that's I, cool i just kind of use that real real muted just for something a little extra mm-hmm. you know you got to have a little bit of extra sustain with the strat because they're single coils yeah that's true so and that's where one thing where like I never really use too many compressors. I have one, it's just in a box and I have it in case I need it, but I've never like used too many and cuz I don't play too many strats or single coils, you know. I'm... Ronley King. I bought mine from Ronley. Yeah, <laughs> Ronley. yeah he, the, ma- he's the master. Um, the ego. Yep, he goes, "Yeah, if you want to buy this one, you can buy it." It's like I will. Yeah. So yep. Works great for me. Um like I just use it in, like basically to add the sustain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the other thing about pedals, though, too, is like, I don't, you didn't bring any to jam night, did you? I, I did not. Yeah. I played straight into the amp that night. And that's the other thing I think is awesome is like, even though I do use pedals and I lean on them in a live setting sometimes, it's nice to go to jam nights and go completely naked and be like, I can do this without. Yep. You yep. know? Yep. And it's great. Yeah. It helps to have a good amp. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I hate to be like, Simpsons did it, but like, Ober doesn't use pedals. <laughs> Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. But yeah. yeah. So like, Ober doesn't use pedals and he seems to do just fine. So whatever, yeah, you know. Understatement, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the other fun thing is like, sometimes if we're in a place playing with Jesse and somebody else wants to come on stage, it's just like, it's this person. I'll just click the pedals where I want and just be like, 
don't use them because you don't need to. Like right. with Ober, it's just like turn the boost on because that's the lead channel for me. And then Ober, that's what he plays anyways. And he'll right. do a volume knob adjustment. You know, you start to figure out <laughs> how people play. It's kind of also like a weird thing is like once I started going around and watching people and playing live and it's just, I started just really analyzing how people use their instruments. And it's like, how can I toss this into what I'm doing? And it's like the dumbest stuff, like using the volume knob on the guitar actually, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah, that's, I do a lot of that. And you got to back off and get clean. Mm -hmm. um, I do a little bit with the tone knob, not a ton. If I want to kind of get that, what they call it, the woman sound that Clapton got, you mm -hmm. roll the knob back. That's nice to have once in a while. But yeah, just using the instrument like you're supposed to, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I've always <laughs> been into like... its ability. <laughs> I've always been into like dinking with guitars and like trying to mod them like as of the last like probably four or five years. But like, and that's the other thing is like you start to find there's like, oh, there's bass contour knobs and treble response knobs. And you can put like uh, treble bleeds into like pickups and or into pots and things like that to make it so like when you roll the volume down, it doesn't get warmer naturally because the pot takes yeah. away some of the the tone that's like how electronics work or whatever and it doesn't matter and some people are just like i don't care just plug the guitar in and play you know like and <laughs> yeah. yeah i just you know i i would love to do that stuff i'm just not probably inclined to it i don't i'd have to read a lot about it yeah well. um i just kind of find the ones that work for me and i have I have four electrics right now, and each one kind of has its own thing that it does. Yeah. And I use them for certain, like if I'm in a real small venue, uh, say like a small brewery or something, I have a 335 mm -hmm. copy that is just perfect for that. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it works out great, you know, and that's that's one where you're just like, I'm not going to bring a stack and a Les Paul to, you know. Like, <laughs> right, you're right. Like know your audience. 30-foot tall yeah. tin ceilings, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, know your audience. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's that's another one that's kind of crazy I bet about like booking places is you're just like I could I could probably play here like just cuz this place has this kind of music doesn't mean like we would fit in or whatever like for example and I'm just throwing this out there's like a wild example but I'm in a punk band like slash rock band slash whatever in Des Moines and uh like we can't play it like sneakers on a Wednesday, you know, like it just sure. like wouldn't work, you know, yeah. but that's like I said, an extreme example. What's up sneakers? <laughs> rock. Oh my gosh. Here's some songs <laughs> with profanity every now and then. Sorry, children. Um, yeah. No. And I just, it just happens though. And I mean, like I don't hold anything against it. Cause it's nice to get like the different aspects, but I'm, you know, I'm sure you've played enough shows in enough places, especially playing with like Tank and then starting to do solo shows and then Day Drinkers and, you know, around the Fort Dodge area and stuff that you've started to see like the different areas of the state and how they interact with the musicians and things like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and that probably comes back to like one of our original conversations about trying to find the music that fits the places, you know. And, right. I mean, is, is, have you ever like taken booking place and then you're just kind of like, Oh, I didn't, I didn't fit in here. Or maybe you're just oh, like, yeah. I'm going to try it a second time. And you try it a second time and it works out the second time or something Absolutely. like that, you know? Absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I feel like it's always difficult to gauge an audience though. Cause I mean, um, I mean, maybe the most difficult for that might be like at a private booking. If you take it and the audience isn't into it, mm -hmm. like which can happen, but it's also kind of like, I've been to a private booking once where like, when it was all over with, it was just like, yeah, like three of us like music. And we wanted a band and like nobody else wanted a band. And it was like, oh no, like that's why like people were so unresponsive. <laughs> yeah. That's sad. You know, Next like, time, you know, just give us a heads up on that. Yeah. I don't know what to expect. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's funny though to like, you know. It, it is. And it's, and it's so funny how much like an audience has the impact on what you're doing and your show and how good you're playing. Yeah. And, like, I think, you know. Um, Keith Urban said, I'm 50% and they're 50%. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Cause I always try to, you know, there's people that argue one way or the other, but the 50, 50, I like that you yep. know, concept. Cause he's like, we give it. And if they give it back and it just, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It totally makes sense. Cause you do feed off of one another a hundred percent. Cause it's, uh, for sure. You get one person that walks in the door and goes, "Woo!" All of a sudden, you're all of a sudden your spirits rejuvenate. Yeah, you're exactly. playing better all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's the other end of it because you could just be like, you could be crushing a song, and then it's like you know crickets for the oh, most part, and yeah, then you just turn to the next person on stage and you're like, 
do we suck or like what's going on like is this any good like <laughs> no it's okay they're just here to drink oh uh, yeah you know i mean <laughs> it's wednesday night what do you yeah, want to exactly do? <laughs> you know it could be that you know i mean it's and i i love going to places and playing for different people because that's one of the th- best things about going to a different place is like the crowd is different the people are different like it's it's always a different mixture of people and you know and that could be like said for any venue too like just sure. you go to a different venue on a different night or like two months down the road and it's a completely different monster it is. i i even even sneakers here or in fort dodge one night was i've been i've done two solos there since i've been doing this and one night was whew, you know and then i came back the next night and it was a whole different ball game yeah you know? i mean yeah and that's that's a rough one too about being just the solo guy like you're naked up there, man. It's all you. It's all on you, man. I mean, he's okay. He's not actually <laughs> naked. He's not actually, but he's like completely I, by himself. Well, you have to watch to find out. You have to go to a show to find out <laughs> <laughs> if Mr. Fisher has pants on. No, but like you have to. Like it's. I've done a, only a couple solo shows ever, and it is just like crippling. And I like, I don't know, because there's nobody to like look next to you on stage and be like we doing okay? Like, is this good? You know, cause usually it's like nice to have that reassurance from somebody else on stage, but you're just by yourself, like <laughs> looking around like, all right. I remember sneakers put that big Sasquatch statue. Back oh where yeah. They play. Yep. So I, I turned and looked at him once or twice and <laughs> asked him if I was doing all right. <laughs> that thing is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like I've oftentimes wondered like, what, what is that thing doing there? Like, do you know what it's doing there? I think she told me the story. I think I drank too much and I don't remember it. Uh, yeah, I, I swear I was playing there maybe with Clint once and like somebody came in with it and it was just like, okay, this is here now. Maybe it was just outside for a while. I don't know, but it was just like, <laughs> yeah, just all of a sudden was there. Okay. Like this is a thing, you know, no, uh, that place is fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can have a lot of fun in there. That's, it comes back to like every venue can have something about it. Cause that place is like literally a restaurant with a bar in it. It is. And it's just like, how is this place this much fun? And it, it's like, a, all right, it works. You There's know? a few places like that in Fort Dodge. It's just hilarious. Yeah. 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 And I, I, think, I feel like every venue is like that. Like I went to the 503, which is in Iowa Falls, for the first time with Clint a few weekends back, maybe like a month or so ago. How was it for you? It was good. It was, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, this place is pretty cool. I never even, you know, I remember Clint's got like calls this venue out by name in a song of his at one point in time like you know and so it's like this is kind of cool like i've been to this place that clint's played at and he's like mentioned in a song and uh they get a lot of pretty cool acts through there it's almost it's like a midway point when bands are traveling so they'll get some bands out of like kansas city and like i've seen some awesome bands at the 503 actually that's cool yeah Yeah. i mean there's okay this is gonna sound ignorant there's college around there right yeah, Ellsworth. Ellsworth. I was wondering if that was college. it. But mm-hmm. Yeah. It's still like... Go Panthers. <laughs> did you go to Ellsworth? I did not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I went to I went to Hawkeye. There you go. Oh, I well, Iowa Central. Yeah. Twice. No, I was just... <laughs> tried to say that really quick so nobody would question it. Um. <laughs> uh, moving on, right? <laughs> yeah, moving on. Oh, man. Yeah, maybe I did go for four years for two-year scholarship. Don't worry about it. Yeah, rock and roll, rock and, and roll. And I'm still not using it. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you found out what you didn't want to do. That's learning. You learned one way or the yeah, other. Yeah, what do you do? Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, like, so you definitely have, like, a, I don't want to say, like, a built-in audience because it's a community college, but, like, there is some sense of a slight built-in audience to some of those places. Yeah, that's called, that's just locals. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, you think about community colleges, like, those kids aren't even really old enough to be in there. Yeah, yeah. That but was kind of... there is, like, there is a clientele there that comes and a fair amount of them, like, like having music there. So. I wonder how that works nice. out. Like, I mean, obviously it's like slightly bigger cause it's got the college in town, but like, I'll bet there's people that like went to community college there, got a job and just stayed there, you know? Oh yeah. You it's know? beautiful town. I'm actually leaving it and I'm kind of sad about it. Oh no. Yeah. Housing market. There's pretty high. Yeah. Like the house, the size we need, like 
the difference between a house there and a house 20 miles south is like a hundred thousand dollar difference jeez yeah. yeah it's wild so <clears throat> yeah the housing market is crazy there's a lot of the markets that are getting crazy like i feel like there's a lot of people doing the singer songwriter band thing and i'm not saying this is what's soaking up the entire market but it's like hard to find vans around that like you can haul things in now like <laughs> just gotta ask fernando where he found his it's all those dang singer songwriters <laughs> taking taking the conversion the vans <laughs> like yeah that's exactly what it is there's so many of us out there <laughs> the curtains oh my gosh yeah uh, but yeah, like I'm talking like those vans, you know, like it, do, it really doesn't even matter. Like vans are just getting expensive of all kinds, you know, I mean, everything co- comes and goes in seasons, I guess. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah, that's popular right now. I, it, honestly, it is. But it's actually also like practical. You can like pretty much clear out the seats, put a bed in there and then just like go to a yeah. gig and then play and then just no sleep and then wake up and drive the next day. Jordan actually just got an awesome camper. Uh, it's yeah. like an old Ford, like. He like did some work on for some guy's house for him, and he just gave him a camper. Oh, Pretty sweet! Much worked out a deal. Like, it's like it's super awesome, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, I've there have been different musicians around the area that have done different things like that to success, and it's like I I agree. This is this this is the way to go. Like, this is the life. It would suck to like go somewhere and then just be like, all right, now I gotta spit. Like, I made. I'm just throwing out numbers. Like, I made three hundred dollars. Now I gotta give one hundred fifty of it away to a hotel so I can stay the night. And it's like. That's rough, you know? Rough. And when you could just like hit a Walmart parking lot or something and just sleep in the camper. Or <sighs> I haven't in stayed in a something. hotel for a long time. <laughs> like, I've played, I went with um, Caleb and Jeremy down to Salem, Iowa, which is other side of Iowa City. It's like a three hour drive for me and mm-hmm. four hour drive for them. And super awesome place. It was a singer songwriter. It had to be all originals. It was a little festival. You had to pay to get in. Mm-hmm. Really fun. Uh, Alex couldn't be there. They were banking on a trio, so they called me and were like, yeah, come play some lead for us if you can. It's like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And But yeah, three hours away, got done, sat around, 10 o'clock, I drove home. Like, <laughs> yep. I hate staying. I love my bed. Yeah. I love uh, my family, so just want to go home <laughs> yeah i kind of got the same way though too like going to shows like even if i wasn't playing in them or like going to like pro wrestling shows or things like that you know it's just like i don't i'm driving home from omaha afterwards i don't care if i get home at two in the morning yeah like, that's fine yeah it's I'm used to that i'm okay yeah I'm that okay used to that. be my like when i was just a musician like i'd sleep till one in the afternoon be up all night like that was my time of night yeah. Yeah, like, I'm good. Like, I'm good at two. <laughs> oh yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Plus nobody's on the road anyway. Right. So yeah, yeah. So uh, we didn't ever circle back to. I think originally we were going to talk about like tube amps, but we kind of talked oh. gear talk a little bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean we we also did cover an hour. I didn't. I like wrote notes and then I just threw them on the floor for some reason because that's how you. That's a good way to use notes. Oh. Um, Looks like we got everything I wrote down covered, which wasn't much. Oh, that's great. So, uh, is there anything you want to tell people about? Like, how can people find your shows? They don't. You don't have the social oh, media. Right. Well, I better get on that. That's what I better do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're on Facebook, though. Yeah, um, I'd add me on Facebook. Yeah, ha- go ahead and add them up there. I, you're also on Instagram too, so I'll just uh, I'll I'll be sure to at least toss the Instagram down below. Sure. Um, this is you, correct? That's me. That I is think. you. Yeah. Yes, there's people that I know that follow you, so it's definitely you. <laughs> all right. Yes, this is you. All right. Look at all these beautiful pictures if you're watching us on the Instagram or on the Patreon channel, which <laughs> watch the Patreon if you want. Sure. Um, but yeah, man, uh, find them online. Otherwise, you can just go to Facebook. And I, I did search uh, DJ Fisher and also Don Fisher on Facebook and like events that you were in that like populated. So like you could just search Facebook and sure. the events will pop up around the area. So Northern Iowa to the central ish Iowa area, um, East and West, a bunch. That's kind of like your area. You yeah. I've uh, been doing some Ankeny here and there. Nice. Yeah, nice. That's back. a nice market. It is. Um, I think the very next thing I have, I think Jordan and I are going to go up and do something in Clear Lake. Cool. No- November 27th. That's awesome. And that'll be tapped in Clear Lake. Cool. Yeah. And then uh, after that, the day drinkers are going to take a short break uh, through the winter and hopefully come back in the spring twice as hard. So. Cool. Cool mm-hmm. beans, man. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, check them out live somewhere. And uh, DJ slash Don, good to, good to see you, man. Call me what you want. <laughs> 
Ah, there it is. What a fun guy. Yeah, this is a good episode. It was good to sit down and talk to him one-on-one instead of just, you know, the little bit of conversations you get to have with people at jam nights. It's never really in-depth when you're kind of out somewhere and you're kind of just hem-hawing with somebody. That's kind of why I like sitting down talking with these people is getting to know them. And I hope you guys are enjoying sitting down getting to know them as well because it's kind of what the podcast is all about. I've got links down below where you can find the day drinkers online. And uh, Don said he does not have a personal Facebook page for, you know, dedicated to his own music. So uh, he is on Facebook. Go check him out if you want. You can search for him and find him. He's out there. Um, otherwise, the day drinkers, you can find him playing with the day drinkers quite a bit, actually. They're going to be taking a little bit of a hiatus coming up here in the winter months. So uh, follow their page so you don't miss out when they reboot and start playing shows again. It's going to be an awesome time. Every one of those guys are talented musicians. And that's one of my favorite things about going out to jam nights and and meeting up with these musicians and talking to them face to face and sitting down and and getting to know their backstories. It's just because everyone's everyone's so good in their own way. It's really intriguing. I think that... If you go to a jam night, you'll find that everyone there is really good at a handful of things, and they don't necessarily bridge over to the next person. So somebody else could be a shredder, where one person plays more uh, with more emotion. Uh, tip of the cap to Owen for teaching me how to play with emotion. Uh, that's a little bit of an inside joke between us, but uh, shout out to Owen, the bassist, and Jesse Wilson Music, uh, also playing with Tank Anthony and moonlighting with other musicians as, as well kid's really talented he's been on the podcast before go check him out uh make sure you click the links down below that's where you'll find the day drinkers stuff and you will also find some audible farm stuff down below too there's a link to the shop as well as a link to the website the shop has all the audible farm goodies including those awesome new shirts i'm running low i do have most sizes available but maybe not in the variety you would want i've been debating making a new order of different of a different variety of those shirts Or uh, maybe I've been kicking around the idea of doing a different shirt, uh, just doing little one-offs here and there of certain types of shirts to see if anybody wants them. But otherwise, I've got the classic shirts still available every size, all the way up to, I think, 3XL, maybe 4XL still. So check that out. It's all in the shop down below. Otherwise, you can find all the Audible Farm stuff at audiblefarm.com. We're on YouTube. If you're listening on YouTube, thank you very much. Click the subscribe button. Otherwise, if you're listening on a podcast service of some sort on your phone or wherever you happen to be, uh, give us a subscribe there. Give us a review. Uh, Leave us a comment wherever you uh, find us on social media and let us know what you thought of the episode. And uh, I just got to say thanks to the guest, Don, for taking some time out of his day and coming over and sitting down in my little mini studio and quote unquote studio and talking. And, uh, you know, I I just... floors me how many people actually listen to this last week there was not an episode as many of you know and it it wasn't like there was a a public outcry where everybody came with pitchforks and torches looking for me but uh there were a few people that were like hey there's no episode this week and i was like oh yeah there was not um i did make a post about it but um i apologize scheduling conflicts and uh i can't believe how busy things are getting uh in the music scene it seems like both the bands that I play frequently with there's a lot of shows and I'm getting asked to play side gigs with musicians here and there as well so uh, it's, it's not like I don't have f- the free time but sometimes when I, I have limited free time and scheduling drops out which happens you know it just kind of takes a little bit of time so and uh, it's unfortunate everyone's got lives and that's why we're all out here doing this as hobbyist musicians there's very few people I've interviewed that are doing it professionally uh, but there are some professional musicians, I guess if you want to call them that, in the area. And uh, you got to tip your cap to them, man. It's their inspirations for the rest of us, every single one of them. And you guys out there, you know who they are. So uh, if you guys got any musicians in your area and you're listening from abroad, uh, check them out live, support them. There's nothing cooler than live music. You never know who's going to show up. You never know who's going to play. You never know what songs they're going to play. Uh, we talked about it in this episode. It comes down to there's an energy between the crowd and, and the people, you know, or the crowd and the performer. It's like 50-50. So, uh, so go out there support live music. I recently played a show with Jesse Wilson and um, I think what is it? Lee Klett, I believe his name is. I hope I don't get that wrong on the first go around. But uh, he was there as well. I got it right, Lee Klett. And he ended up jumping up there and playing during intermission. And boy, oh boy, he was good. He was really good. Uh, not only that, but every now and then he'd sneak up and play or sing some harmonies while Jesse was singing. It was the coolest thing ever. It was so fun to have him there. 
and he's just like, if I'm, if I'm in the way, let me know. It's like, dude, you're not in the way at all. Get up here and do some stuff. So he even came up and we did a full band stuff with him for a little bit. It's just a fun time, and that's one of those things I say about live music, because you never quite know what's going to happen there. So you got to go check it out live. And uh, if you guys have somebody you want to be on the podcast, have them hit me up. I, I've gone through most of the messages I've had in my backlogs trying to get in contact with people, um, which is kind of weird, but uh, it's unfortunate because, you know, sometimes scheduling doesn't line up, even now that we've finally got a hold of each other and winter's coming. But uh, I can always Skype interviews, so if you guys want to Skype me, hit me up. Um, otherwise, I'm going to get out of here and I'll see you next week. All right, peace. Peace.